Visualize your most cherished memory. Now imagine every minute detail of that memory is replaced with dots, slashes, at symbols, and more. Hello everybody. I am Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-351, Read-Only Memory. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-351. Containment Class, Euclid. Disruption Class, Connect. Risk Class, Caution. Special Containment Procedures. All copies of SCP-351 are to be stored on secure Foundation Containment databases, with access only available to Memetics Division personnel. If testing is performed, a blank copy of SCP-351 consisting solely of SCP-351-1 will be used to neutralize the anomaly's effects in the test subject and potentially compromised personnel. Bots IO Shannon and IO Minerva are programmed to routinely scan online websites for appearances of SCP-351 copies. Found copies are to be downloaded, then removed from the site under standard online anomaly containment protocols. Mobile Task Force Psi-13 EOT, has been tasked with halting mass memory alteration in the event SCP-351 affects large portions of the populace. Task Force agents must follow standard memetic quarantine protocols and are equipped with electronics that display the aforementioned blank copies which must be viewed on a twice-daily basis. Testing to determine the limitations of the anomaly's implanted memories is underway. Description SCP-351 is an ASCII plaintext.txt file containing a virulent memetic agent which implants false memories visualized as ASCII art, a graphics design technique that uses printable ASCII standard and compliant characters to form images, into human subjects that view the file. The primary component of the anomaly is SCP-351-1, a string of characters that does not correspond to characters in any known encoding standard, which converts the entire file into a memetic vector. Additional text added to the file is the basis for the false memories SCP-351 implants with the level of detail the text has corresponding to the level of detail subjects can recall from the memories. All memories are recalled eidetically and are resistant to all amnestic treatments and effects. Copies of the file SCP-351-A display the same properties. However, exposing subjects to SCP-351 or a copy of the file lacking text other than SCP-351-1, hereafter blanks, results in the memory being replaced by a blank memory, entirely removing it. This in turn serves as the primary method of removing the memetic infection. Despite the clear recall, subjects report that the memories lack the immediacy and richness of their other memories. It is theorized that this is the result of the strings of text the memories are based on inherently lacking the sensory qualia normal memories are based on. Subjects memetically compromised by the files, hereafter SCP-351-B instances, are capable of implanting their false memories into persons they associate with, such as friends or colleagues. Conversations of any medium involving an instance will result in the instance discussing memories from SCP-351, turning the conversation into a memetic vector which affects all persons involved in it. These affected persons become further SCP-351-B instances, and can spread the meme in the same manner. Beyond the addition of previously non-existent memories, SCP-351-B experience few other cognitive effects. Instances behave as they would prior to infection when not in conversation with uninfected individuals, and questioning regarding any ways SCP-351 memories conflict with actual memories is met with disregard. Symptoms of lethargy, anhedonia, and apathy have been observed in SCP-351-B instances at significantly higher rates of incidence than in the unexposed population. Addendum 1 SCP-351 Text Samples 
The following are excerpts from SCP-351-A instances as they were found at the time of their discovery. Full copies of the file contents are available in Document 351-RT-267. Instance Number SCP-351-A-5 You were marching through the forest, everything dark except for the flashlights of yellow survivors and the enemy bombs going off overhead. Their explosions looked like blinding sparks. John's blood was still warm on you and your gun, and every time you looked behind, you expected to see him there, smiling like always, but he wasn't there. The napalming turned everything to incinerator heat. The palm trees swayed and broke, cinders going into your nose. The enemy soldiers emerged from the canopy, repelling in and they shot at you. You never felt a more searing, stabbing pain in your life than when the bullets hit your body. The sensation of a thousand fire ants at an open wound. With luck, you fell to the ground, out of their sight. The rest didn't. You heard their screams. You only saw the bloody dirt in front of your face. You knew that the enemy did this, and for that, you hated. You hated the enemy. At that moment, you vowed to fight the enemy for the rest of your life, and you vowed that you would make the trek to coordinates redacted to train for an eternity of combat with the enemy. For John. For the survivors. For the world. Recovery. Found on a computer at an abandoned military complex in Denali National Park and Preserve, Alaska. Additional files in the area suggested plans to disseminate copies of SCP-351-A5 onto various online forums had been arranged, though had not been performed for unclear reasons. Instance number SCP-351-A19 You didn't drive the car past the red light. It was green, and the street was clear of pedestrians and cars. Your vision wasn't blurred. You were sober. It was dark, but your headlights were on so you could see the road fine. Your wife wasn't shouting at you. Her head was leaning against your shoulder. You saw the other car coming so you could swerve out the road in time. You were on the right side of the road and they were on the wrong side, so you had done nothing wrong. It would have been impossible for your cars to crumple together, for the windshield to shatter, and even if that did happen, it would make no sense because you swerved out of the way in time. Your seatbelts were buckled, so nobody could have gone through the window. You had no sights of blood, or glass shards in your body, or her body. Your one year anniversary celebration with her happened the day after. It was a great party. She was laughing and smiling and talked about how great of a career her lab work has been. The days after were happy, and so have the months after been. She's been with you the whole time. She hasn't gone off. Four months of joy since the anniversary. It wasn't your fault. Recovery. Found on the personal computer of Sandra Holt after her suicide on December 4th, 2016. Interview SCP-351-A19-1. Interviewer, Undercover Agent Sasha Han. Interviewee, Alyssa Dean. Forward, Alyssa Dean was a work colleague of Sandra Holt prior to her death and had become an SCP-351-B instance due to frequent interaction with Holt. Following the conclusion of the interview, Agent Han exposed themselves and Dean to a blank that removed memetic infection. Begin log. Can I ask you some questions about Sandra Holt? It wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault, I'm sure, but I still need to ask you some questions. How long had you known each other? I... about three years, I guess, since I started working at... Redacted. She was a good boss. Kinda quiet, I guess, but not a hard ass or anything. Really sensitive. And then she started dating Jane Kisley. Did I mention her? Her wife. Well, future wife at that time. And then it was like a light went on inside her. What was Jane like? I only met her once. Except when I saw her at her anniversary party. 
After she died in the car accident, she survived, and I was in the car too. It was a great party. She was laughing and smiling. She didn't go through a window. Yes, it was a great party. Uh, we're getting off track here. What did she look like, Jane, her wife? Oh, she was like... 5'2", mousy brown hair, kind of straight up and down, just like a U plus 007C vertical line, you know? Not my thing, but you could tell they were into each other. Real sweet. And no glass shards in her body. No glass shards, right. None on either of them. Or blood. I never saw blood. Yeah. Sorry, there's something... You mentioned an accident? No. I mean, yes. She swerved out of the road in time. Nobody went through a window. That's very clear. That didn't happen. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault, but there was an accident. Yes, the day before their anniversary. Then they had the party. It was a great party. And then her funeral a few weeks later. And then they had four months of joy. And then Sandra committed suicide. Yes, that makes sense. What was her mental state like in the days before the suicide at work? She kept having this one file open on her computer, revising it over and over and crying. Which is weird because she'd been having those months of joy. And she was drinking, which was odd too. Because she was sober and her vision wasn't blurred. She could see the road fine. Yes, that's right. She saw the road fine. Her lights were on. Her lights were on. And it wasn't her fault. End log. Addendum 2. Experiment log 351-1. On January 9th, 2007, researcher Ferdinand Fortier was granted permission to perform preliminary tests to determine the limitations of SCP-351's memory alteration capabilities. Tests would be conducted with Fortier and his research team inserting text into an SCP-351-A instance via autonomous processes, then displaying to a D-class subject who would be infected and subsequently asked to describe their memories. Blanks would then be shown to the subject and the whole research team as to minimize the potential for memetic spread. Experiment Log 351-1 Test Number 1 Text used summary. A detailed paragraph describing a green-eyed, black-and-white cat said to be one the subject currently owns. Outcome. The subject visualized the cat as being cat-shaped with ASCII characters forming an outline of its body, fur patterns, and shading. All characters were grayscale except for the eyes, which were irises of at signs. The color green was not mentioned, suggesting grayscale visualization of the memories. Past tense tests yielded the same results, though with an inability for the subject to describe why they no longer own the cat. Test number two. Text used. You own a black cat, a striped cat, and a white cat. Outcome. The black cat was described as being like a whole formed from ASCII block characters, the striped cat being a cat-shaped mass of stripes formed by hyphens and similar symbols, and the white cat being an outline of a cat formed from periods and dots. They were incapable of elaborating. Test number three. Text used, you own a cat. Outcome. Subject stated, I own a cat. They were incapable of elaborating. Test number four. Text used, you will own a cat. Outcome. Subject described a lengthy, incoherent memory involving reverse blindness, feline anatomy, and space travel. Further tests with future tense text yielded similar results. Test number five. Text used summary. The text of test number one, but translated into Spanish. D3468, the subject for this test, does not speak Spanish. Outcome. The implanted memory was described to be highly disorienting for reasons that the subject could not identify. The cat present was described as having singing limbs, a shape of rapidly changing ASCII symbols, 
and eyes forming advertisements written in an unclear language. Visualizations were not consistent between different subjects. Test number six, text used summary. A disturbing childhood encounter with SCP-3840, intentionally written to make note of colors, sounds, specific physical appearances, and additional qualia. Outcome. When provided with images and information regarding SCP-3840, the subject displayed expected fear responses, albeit with no response when recounting or illustrating their memories. While the level of detail was higher than that of previous tests, the memories continued to possess ASCII art qualities, along with hazy surroundings and amorphous shapes for objects that weren't thoroughly described. No non-grayscale coloration was described. Test number 7. Text used summary. Revised version of the test number 6 test, but with a doubled word count and further details. Outcome. Expected fear responses and a phobia of dense forests displayed, though the lack of realism from the ASCII art qualities still reduced overall emotional impact. Hypothesis regarding correspondence between the level of detail and the vividness of implanted memories are confirmed. Test number 8. Text used summary. Memories of being rescued by a mobile task force in the same scenario as test number 7. Outcome. Same fear responses were present but lessened. The subject had a greater affinity toward mobile task forces. However, they remained skeptical due to their past D-class testing in the Foundation. Test number 9. Text used summary. A series of events involving the subject being a member of a mobile task force, eventually demoted to being D-class personnel as part of the containment of a fictional anomaly. Outcome. A greater affinity to the Foundation was established. Experiences they had as a D-class were not overwritten by the implanted memories, some integrating themselves as events during their task force experience, causing heavy skepticism toward the Foundation to remain. What influence the ASCII art visualization had on this is not clear. Test number 10. Text used, you have never doubted the Foundation. You have always been loyal to the Foundation. Outcome. Subject was found to be agreeable with Foundation protocols, such as containment and the maintenance of the veil. Ambivalence regarding D-Class testing was not wholly removed. Experiments using longer and more detailed texts to further alter personality traits are planned. Note, continued tests of this nature are currently forbidden by order of the Ethics Committee. Addendum 3. Project Tin Man. On March 29, 2007, researcher Lucinda Berenger was performing standard monitoring of SCP-9906 when the anomaly's cognitohazardous properties bypassed all mimetic filtration systems, converting Berenger into a mimetic vector. Before a containment breach could ensue, Berenger injected all available amnestics in her vicinity and exposed herself to experimental anti-mimetic glyphs. The cumulative effect of both the anomaly and the measures taken by herself was the complete erasure of her personality, memories, and almost all mental faculties. This induced an effective vegetative state. After being connected to life support, no methods were found by which Behringer could be returned to her prior state. On April 21, 2007, the Ethics Committee granted approval for the experimental use of SCP-351 in reconstructing Behringer's personality and memories. Classified Project Tin Man, all database information on Behringer, correspondence from co-workers, and personal journal entries were gathered to write a heavily detailed text with the potential to restore her mental states. Said text would be comprised of all known thoughts, life events, memories, and personality traits arranged in chronological order. By October 1, 2007, the text had reached 50,000 words. Once no new information could be found, the text was added to a specially designated SCP-351-A copy, SCP-351-A-Delta. On October 10, 2007, 
Researcher Berenger was exposed to the file. Initially, only slight limb movements were performed, but after one hour, she began to pace around her room. An interview was performed the following day. Interview SCP-351-B-Delta-1 Interviewer, Researcher Rayan Boussed Interviewee, Lucinda Berenger Hereafter, SCP-351-B-Delta Date, October 11, 2007 Forward Researcher Boussed was a colleague and close friend of Berenger prior to the SCP-9906 breach. He served as one of the lead researchers on Project Tin Man, specifically requesting to perform the initial interview due to his familiarity with her. Begin Log Berenger SCP-351-B Delta stands in the center of the room, blankly staring at a wall. Berenger, could you please move over to the chair by the window? He taps on the glass separating his observation chamber from the room. No response occurs. Lucinda. SCP-351-B Delta slowly turns her head. She moves the chair and desk in front of the window, seating herself. Hello. Are, are you feeling well? I'm feeling fine. Okay, that's good. Look, apologies if I get unprofessional here. It's just been so long since I've actually seen you look, well, alive. I hope you understand. I do. It is of note that at this point in the interview, SCP-351-B Delta's facial expressions have not experienced any change. <sighs> so, how did you feel when you were under, before we showed you the file? No response. Nothing? Can't think of anything? Well, that's alright. I shouldn't be surprised, so- I don't see the need to speak much. Succinct is always better. Well, that is identical to part of what we wrote in the file, but you aren't wrong there. So you remember who your husband is, right? Mike Landon Page. I would never forget. Alright, good. And do you also remember your marriage? You know, when you were at the- We were at the church, at the end of the winding road, leading into the woods. The sun was a shining ring of dashes. And the tree's leaves were thousands of swaying angle quotes that kept fluttering off. The wind was chilly. The clouds were puffy brackets. It was a beautiful day. Well, that's good to hear. Because of our involvement in the memetics division, the Foundation monitored the marriage and limited attendees to our co-workers. But it was beautiful all the same. Alright, good. Do you remember anything else about those clouds? The trees? The clouds were puffy brackets, and the tree's leaves were thousands of swaying angle quotes that kept fluttering off. What else is there to say? I know you aren't one for talking, but isn't there anything more you could say? Even just a simple, I can't remember anything else. I can't remember anything else. I... <sighs> Alright then. Can you remember how you felt then? Any of your emotions? I was happier than I had ever been in my entire life. Every dash and letter of Mike Page's face filled me with joy. He kept making references to those bad Star Trek episodes we saw years back, and I couldn't stop laughing. At night when we laid back and stared at the asterisks in the sky, I felt like I was in love all over again. Does remembering this make you happy? Yes. So how come your tone of voice hasn't changed at all? How come your facial expressions haven't changed? No response. You said that this makes you happy, but I can't see it, Lucinda. I remember every day after that marriage, you couldn't help but grin if I even brought up the slightest thing on it. Like how every dash and letter of Mike's face... Researcher Boussed views the blank on his computer terminal, then resumes speaking. I'd bring up the slightest thing and I'd keep seeing you smile for so long after. SCP-351-B Delta slowly smiles. You're doing it now, but it's like when you copy what I say. It doesn't feel genuine. I was happier than I had ever been in my entire life. But you keep repeating that. How I was happier than I had ever... 
This doesn't feel genuine, Lucinda. I don't feel I'm speaking to the real... to the real you. I'm myself, Ray. I don't get what you mean. <sighs> I didn't want to tell you this earlier, since the clouds were puffy brackets and it was a beautiful day. But I think I should. It was beautiful. But what is it? Mike's dead. No response. He was in a containment breach several months after yours. He left a last message, but the agents never found his body. Oh. SCP-351-B Delta's smile shifts into a frown. Oh god. How could this happen? That's the only reaction you can have? I am distraught. How could this happen? Oh god. I was laying back and staring at the asterisk in the sky, but this is all? Could you please, please think about the rest of your time with him? Can it get anything else out of you? I don't understand what you mean. I loved him more than anyone else in the world. But that's identical to what we wrote in the document, where we wrote down how we were at the church at the end of the... Please, can you think of anything outside of what was in the document? Anything. Did the memories give you any mind past that? I loved him more than anyone else in the world. That's just... what we wrote. It's word for word what we wrote. He had such beautiful great gradients of hashtags and ampersands in his eyes. I loved him more than anyone else in the world. That's just... I loved him more than anyone else in the world. I loved him more than anyone else in the world. I'm sorry, Lucinda. Researcher Busset exits the observation chamber. SCP-351-B Delta continues to stare at the space Busset was formerly in, frowning. No other movements are made. End log. In a state of emotional distress, Researcher Busset exited the chamber without viewing the blank on his computer terminal breaching standard security protocols. This resulted in the memetic spread of SCP-351-B Delta's memory constructs to all present Project Tin Man personnel until site security was alerted and dispatched. Unusually, upon exposure to blank instances, the affected personnel experienced a near-complete loss of all memories regarding SCP-351-B Delta. The theorized cause of this is that the implanted SCP-351-A Delta memories were so similar to actual memories of SCP-351-B Delta that both became connected, causing the erasure of implanted memories to erase actual ones. Since all acquaintances of SCP-351-B Delta had been recruited for Project Tin Man and were present when Busset breached protocol, all of the original memories SCP-351-A Delta had been based on are lost. Researcher Busset has been removed from all SCP-351-related research, and new security protocols are being implemented to prevent the repeat of incidents of this nature. Project Tin Man has been considered a failure. However, SCP-351-B Delta has proven useful in isolated environments that prevent memetic spread. Following revisions to SCP-351-A Delta that removed information regarding emotions and added loyalty-increasing text, based on the findings of researcher Fortier's team in Experiment Log 351-1, SCP-351-B Delta can consistently perform activities beneficial to memetic research on a daily basis. Assuming plans for life support systems that will automatically provide health assistance to subjects are completed, SCP-351-B Delta is expected to be capable of serving the Foundation indefinitely. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and would like to hear more, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, if there are any SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.